There are lots of different adjustments we can make on our bikes. Click or two of compression here, maybe a few PSI there, are certainly good adjustments when it comes to dialing in our bike for different riders, or maybe even the same riders on different terrain. You may also have seen some bikes with geometry flip chips. This, again, can help suit different riders with different styles, or maybe just increase the versatility of a frame. Geometry flip chips work because they can affect where our weight sits on the bike. The fore and aft balance of a bike is vital when thinking about riding steeper terrain or just nailing that flat off camber turn. But that's not to say it's the only way to change where our weight sits or indeed the most effective adjustment. You see, whereas a flip chip could shuffle the head and seat tube angle half a degree either way, a different bar rise, for instance, can also help you move where your weight sits on the bike and I would argue to an even greater extent. But before we get into making effective cockpit changes here on our bike with our handlebars, let's think about one of the easier aspects to adjust, stem length. Stems are a great place to start because they're visually very easy to understand. A longer stem brings your weight forward, closer to the front axle, and a shorter stem will bring it more rearward. But is it really that simple? So, in the simplest terms, bringing your weight more forward over that front axle will help in situations where front end grip is vital, especially flatter turns or trails and especially climbing. Quite simply, more of your weight is driving that contact patch of the tire straight into the ground. A shorter stem will bring our shoulders up and back. This means we can be more upright in our body position potentially increasing our line of sight, especially on steeper terrain. A shorter stem puts our weight further back and onto the rear axle, which can also help us brace against the bike to maximize our braking. So let's look at my body position swapping between two stems, a 35 millimeter stem and a 50 millimeter stem. So that stem's done and dusted, right? Well, not really. You see, a longer stem is also a longer lever. Now I want you to imagine it as a big wrench. The longer the wrench, the more mechanical advantage you have over the thing you're turning. Long stems can give heavier, more weighted input, which can feel precise and predictable. It also means that it can help dull feedback and chatter from the front wheel upwards, as quite simply, the bigger lever plays both ways. In terms of maximizing your input, as well as reducing the effects coming back into your hands as the front wheel gets wrestled and bounced around by obstacles or chatter. That means we want a long stem, right? But what about the steeps? Well, we've got two options here. We could ride around all day long with a spare stem in our backpack for the steep runs, the climbs, or the flat corners. Or, and this sounds crazy, we could use a combination of stem length, handlebar length, and what we know about bike geometry to give the right compromise. If your stem is short, which you like either because of the body position it offers or the more rearward weight bias, you can temper it with handlebar width. You see, bars used to be a lot narrower than they are now. And that was in part due to where the sport came from and the road cycling DNA that we don't really talk about anymore. Narrow bars play well with longer stems, both in terms of quickening up the handling as well as body position. If your bar is very wide, it brings your chest lower, and that might not be what you want if your stem is already six miles long. In fact, it's not uncommon for modern cross-country bikes to come with shorter stems and wider bars now, which would have been unthinkable a few years ago. A wider bar, though, is a great way to reclaim the leverage lost when moving to a shorter stem. It not only helps calm the noise and deflection of a front wheel by being a bigger lever, but it also gives us more to lean into on flatter turns. Why do wide bars give us a more precise feel? Well, much in the same way that our old school long stems do. One of the reasons is of course, leverage. And that cuts both ways. Instances where there's a rock or root trying to grab your wheel are far easier to overcome with a wider bar. The second is that the further our hands go away from the center of our steering axis, the more distance they will travel to turn the same amount of degrees at the front wheel. 
This slows down our steering, meaning we can make small changes to direction with more precision. Tuning the relationship between bar width and stem length is very personal, and you don't always wanna go for the widest bar possible. You can see here when using the same stem, the difference in body position while using an 800 millimeter wide bar of the same rise and dimensions compared to one I've cut down to my size, 750 millimeters. Let's look at me with two different bar widths out on trail, see if you can spot the body position difference. As the rise of our bars get higher, it shifts weight from our hands and puts it into our feet. It also sets our whole bodies more upright. There is something of a paradox here though. A higher rise bar will put less weight on the front wheel. However, it can also bring the bars closer to the rider, so they're more in range to press and push against. A good way to think about it is a low bar or a low front end applies the weight in a mandatory fashion. It's kind of there whether you like it or not. The higher the front end, the more conscious the rider has to be to bring the weight back to the front wheel, especially on flatter terrain. Similarly, a high rise bar keeps our weight over the rear. So great on steep terrain, but it can sometimes feel vague and lack grip on flatter trails. So what we really want is balance. Something that's sitting on the threshold of weighting the front for grip while also letting us get our weight back when riding steeper sections. Suddenly, we're in charge of where our weight sits instead of having it bias in either direction. So let's look at me ride the same section with my preferred bar width, stem length, but different rises. The difference is huge. Look at my arms and shoulders to really highlight where my mass is sitting. Of course, we all have different length limbs and taller people can usually be more comfortable on a higher rise bar, simply because their legs are longer. It also lifts the torso higher above the front end of the bike. For instance, Ben Cathro probably rides a slightly different setup than myself. This is also a great opportunity to talk about bar roll forwards and backwards. Where we set our bar roll has a huge effect on forearm position and thus upper body position as well. More forward roll is a great way to maximize both the rise of the bar and the weight on the front axle. However, sometimes under heavy braking or compressions, it can make our weight feel like it's being thrown forward as our wrists want to rotate around the bar. It can give us less to brace against and it can make us feel at risk of going over the bars in extreme cases. A more rolled back bar gives you a stronger position to brace against, but it can push the elbows towards the hips, meaning that some riders might find it makes them fall into the bike or weight the front less effectively. Worse yet, it can give the rider the dreaded T-Rex riding position. Using the same bar and stem, you can see how much difference can be made with this one change alone. We're all different shapes and sizes though, so experiment to find what works best for you. A bar that has more rise is more sensitive to changes in bar roll, as it can become easier to combine the two. This might play to your advantage, but it's also something to be aware of. A good quality bar will have center markings to use and rely upon. Now, before you start thinking, we haven't even talked about sliding the stem along the steerer tube. I mean, how could she forget that? We haven't. We've left it until now because maximizing your bike fit is vital. But you could argue that without understanding the effects of bar and stem dimensions, you would have to steer clear of the subject of steer clear stem, stem position? Anyway, fundamentally, where your stem is on your steer tube is about height. But the more we understand, the more we realize it can be about changing the dimensions of our bikes also. It takes some thinking though. I want you to imagine this not as a vertical line, but as the near diagonal one that it really is. That means the higher we go, the shorter the distance between saddle and bars. The further down our stem sits on the steer tube, the longer. So that's it, right? Well, not really. This can be one of the single most effective ways to change the size of your bike. A low rise bar high on the steer compared to a high rise bar with the same stem but lower on the steer tube is a great way to adjust the effective length of your bike 
without gaining or losing height on the front. We then don't need to look for a new frame or search for reach adjust headsets. Conversely, if we put a low rise bar low on the steered tube, it is drastically different from a high rise bar higher up on the steered tube. It's like a totally different bike. One last thing for bars, something that is very, 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 very important, comfort. Now, some people will just find that a higher rise bar is more comfortable for climbing. But usually when I think about comfort, I'm thinking about my hands. Grip diameter can play a role in this. A thicker, squishier grip can make for happier hands. However, our hands do tend to have their strongest grip when closer to a tight fist, like you can achieve on a thin grip. We wanna strike a balance between reducing vibration and grip strength. Now, if you're between grip sizes and you're not sure what to go for, perhaps consider brake feel. A larger diameter grip puts the hand further back relative to the lever and can make our brakes feel a little bit punchier, if that's your thing. Is there any other way to easily adjust our body position or weight distribution? Absolutely. You might have heard that there's a big change on the new model of your bike, only to realize it's a half a degree steeper in the effective seat tube angle. Well, between the neutral and extreme positions on our seat rails, there is about one degree of play in either direction. That means you can steepen the effective seat tube angle. Bring in your weight more over the bottom bracket to keep the front end planted on climbs, or you can bring it more rearward to take some pressure off your wrists on flatter terrain. It also has consequences in how big your bike will feel sat down. So why not experiment? Find out what works for you. Now, if you are very particular about your bike fit or you experience some level of discomfort out riding, then it is definitely worth it to reach out and seek the advice of a professional bike fitter. That's not me. Or you could just do what I did, which is search the internet for 75 hours of YouTube videos, trying to figure out why my knees sound like the percussion section of a brass band. Thank you so much for watching today's video and learning about how we can effectively adjust our own bike fit, mostly with our cockpit. I hope these tips help you to dial in your fit and be more comfortable on your bike out there. And hopefully, we'll see you out on the trail soon.